Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Australian eCrit Series powered by KISS, Swift Community Live, and Fortune Night GCN. My name is Jesper Anker, and as always, I'm joined by my good friend, former pro, and now turned coach, Wesley Salzberger. How are you doing, Wes? I'm good, Jesper. Thanks for having me on, mate. But you're not our only guest tonight. As you might have seen by the title, we've actually got Cy Richardson joining the eCrit Series tonight. So we're actually going to just throw it over to him for a second. So excuse me while... I move over to the Swift station. Moving my way over. We've got Cy Richardson in the GCN kit on a Wahoo kicker. How are you feeling, Cy? Hey, man. Yeah, I'm all right, thanks. A little bit nervous, I've got to say. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a crit. Uh, but, but, yeah, looking forward to it. How does it feel that your entire career has led up to this exact moment in time? Well, it's, it's funny how things work out. Uh, no, I guess, you know, over the years I've done my fair share of crits, uh, raced in Australia a little bit. I know how, I know how fast those guys are and I know how much they love a crit. So, um, so, yeah, I suppose I've got the experience, if not the fitness. Good, it's good to hear. So this is your fifth race on Swift we talked about earlier. What are you going to do different tonight? <laughs> I'm going to try and sit in a little bit more, if I'm honest. Uh, so, yeah, one of the things that it's very easy to do is to get to the front and, you know, try and stretch your legs a bit. But given I'm not exactly sure where I'm at at the moment, I'm just going to try and hang in there. I mean, I won't, because inevitably I'll get involved with the racing, but that's the plan at the moment. Good, I'm, good. I'm glad to hear that. So what's your power-up technique? What's that going to be like tonight? Are you going to throw one off every lap, or are you going to save that aero power-up for the sprint? I'm just going to freestyle. Freestyle my power-ups. Yeah. No, no. I, I don't know too fair. I gather, uh, well, so we've got seven laps, so you know, maybe the first one, get a feel for things. And, I guess often it's using power-ups where other people are using power-ups, just so you don't lose out. Good. So you're actually going to be racing with a few former pros, strong riders. How do you feel you compare yourself to those guys down in Australia? Uh, well, like I said, you know, Australians I know love a diet of crits, uh, very much like English riders or British riders. Um, it was never my absolute strong suit. I used to really enjoy it and I used to do all right, but um, given that it's been a while, you can get kind of quite rusty. So uh, if they've been riding the whole series, then I imagine I'm in for a shoeing, but we'll see. So if any newcomers out there are watching this for the first time and thinking, what are they watching right now? Could you quickly explain what is Swift? Crikey, so uh, Zwift is, well, as you can see, I'm riding a, a, a static indoor trainer, uh, and my bike is hooked up, so all the data that I'm producing, the power I'm producing, has translated into this virtual world, and I'm gonna be racing against people, uh, well, from all over the world, I suppose, technically, um, and yeah, on this you know, virtual reality course. What about the equipment you're on? Which bike, trainer of choice? Uh, okay, so I'm on a Wahoo kicker. And I'm riding my Canyon Air Road uh, with uh, SRAM ETAP on there. Zip 454. So I've gone for the, uh, for the fully aero, but not super duper aero. Uh, you know, you never know quite what kind of crosswinds are going to come into the studio. So, so yeah, I've, I've gone for a practical race bike. Good. Well, I wish you the best of luck. I'm going to head over and talk to a bit more to Wes. So cool. best of luck, man. Thanks, man. Cheers. Now we're going to head back over through the studio, back to the setup to talk a bit more to Wes and hear all about the eCrit series. So, Wes, for the first time tuning in out there, what exactly is the eCrit series? What are these Aussies doing every Tuesday? Well, these Aussies are in their garage, in their lounge room, whatever their setup is, and they're absolutely firing it out. So we've seen uh, Dunn actually uh, leading the series. He's been the most consistent up there every week, uh, and he's well out in front on 223 points. So throughout this series, the riders are racing for points. Uh, and at the end of this, they're uh, tallied up. So the top six riders will be heading off down into Melbourne, uh, which will be announced now, actually, uh, that it will be at the new store, Rafa store, which opened in Melbourne. Uh, last Thursday had the grand opening for the Rafa store in Melbourne. So it will be at the clubhouse, and that'll be on the 19th of September uh, down in Melbourne. So those riders will be flown across those top six, and then we'll have the top three from the Western uh, E-Crit series also joining them. So there, this is the Eastern one here, and we do have one at 9 o'clock, uh, uh, which is the Western one. So we're mixing those two together and they'll come together for a big finale on the 19th September. So that'll be the day before the World Championships and it's going to be a hell of a showdown. It's going to be a spectacle. A spectacle. So make sure to get your racing in. There's about, what, four or five races left in the E-Crit series. So there's 100 points off for grabs. It's really not too late yeah, to get into some... top five, top seven. So get on your bike and get racing. Wes, you're now turned coach. Nine minutes to go. Any tips for Cy in tonight's race? 
Make sure you have a good warm up side because it, it takes off very quick at the start. So they're quite aggressive out the gates. Everyone's going to do a little bit of a leg shakedown to start with. So a good warm up is definitely an advantage there. So he's saying make sure to get a good warm up. Get ready. He was actually standing still trying to listen to what you were saying. So now he's getting cranked up and he's getting ready. And also be ready for that sprint side right out of the gate. It's like cyclocross. All over the sprint, he's saying, as you can see now on the big screen. Wes, are you expecting any wattage bazookas tonight from Sai or any of the other racers in the race? Yeah, I'll definitely uh, I will see some wattage bazookas from uh, Jones, who loves to just go out there and keeps hitting them over and over. He's actually from New Zealand, not eligible for points, but he's still rocked up uh, for a considerable amount of these races and really racing them quite aggressively. We will see Shaw probably drop some watt bazookas. He loves a good attack. So Shaw will be up there. Ockerby has been just like a little bit of an assassin. He's just sort of in the mix there. He's went on a few attacks early in the series. And now that he's really honing in on his sprint, he's been doing a lot of track training down here at the, at the local velodrome in Launceston. So he's got a bit of speed in the legs and he'll be one to watch towards the finish of the race. But we also have uh, Anthony Vegan Porsche, which this course suits him a little bit better with that drag and that heel in it. So he'll be looking to get up there and amongst it as well. You'd think it'd fit him better since he's like, what, 61 kilos, 170 tall. But I had a chat with Anthony shortly before today's race, and he actually said this is one of the courses that just doesn't suit him. He just doesn't have that kick coming up towards the final, you know, 700 meters. So we'll see what Anthony can do. Maybe the added incentive, that extra carrot out in front that is Cy Richardson. We'll see if Anthony can find that extra gear out on course. Seven minutes to go. Wes, tonight's race, I think... What sort of impact is size appearance in this race going to have on your overall speed and intensity of tonight's race? I don't think they'll want to take it easy on Sai at all. They'll, they'll, they'll welcome him in with a good amount of watts, I think so. So Sai's off for a, for a very hard and fast start. These guys aren't going to go easy on Sai joining in the race. So I think it really adds a, adds a great, great note to the race. Everyone's uh, pretty excited uh, when, uh, when this was announced that Sai would be joining the race. So it's certainly exciting for the guys to have Sai in amongst it. And uh, it's going to be a hell of a showdown. Have you raced yourself with or against Sai? I have, yeah. I uh, raced uh, Paris against uh, Cy um, back when he was, yeah, oh, I think it was 2011 it was. Uh, we were involved in a bit of a crash towards the end of the race. Uh, my, my teammate at the time, Johnny Mearsman, uh, I was helping position him before the final and I got him up there and then uh, me and Cy got, actually got tangled up a little bit in a crash. Uh, well, we, I did, we didn't come down, but... Then. I just, I just had, I had to have a sneaky look and do a little bit of a Matt Keenan and search up the results. And I was 31st, and Cy was, uh, Cy was back in 34th. So yeah, got it, just got him there. So the Aussies take that one. We'll see if that's going to be changed tonight. As we got five minutes to go until the races will get underway. I'm not quite sure. Have you seen if Troy Hairfoss is on the start line tonight? No, I haven't seen Troy's name pop up yet. Unless he's going to be a last minute in this last five minutes. So. I didn't quite get around to doing a bit of stalking on that. He's probably still doing some racing as well. Last week, he was doing a lot of racing uh, with uh, his MotoGP in Australia. So he may be still, uh, he may come in later in the series if he has time. So if you're unfamiliar to who Troy Herfoss is, he is actually the current champion MotoGP in Australia. He's actually back-to-back -back champion, and he's been racing the E-Crit for the first half just winning races left, right, and center. But since the MotoGP season has picked up again, he's refocused onto the bike with an engine instead of the one powered by his legs. But we're missing you, Troy, and we'll hope to see you back very soon because he's one of the guys that would light up the race. He would attack off the front, solo all the way to the finish line. But we've got Natsy in here. We've got Pat Shaw, perhaps even Cy could attack far out. What are you thinking, Wes? Yeah, and uh, I think uh, having Pat Shaw there, who likes to race really aggressively as well, Nadzi won't be joining us tonight, unfortunately. Nadzi's uh, working uh, down the coast for the fire brigade. He was going to take his kicker with him. Didn't work out for logistics. So Nadzi's actually sent me a photo before. He's got a beer and he's cheering the other boys on. So we will see Pat Shaw go out on the attack for sure. Pat is a very aggressive racer, and he will also try to finish it off as well, which we saw him do on the London course. He was very aggressive, attacking early on, trying to make the race, shake the legs out a little bit, and then he went on to win that sprint, launching it 500 meters ago. He really does that so often. Six, 500 meters to go, pops that power up and just 
heads down and what's up through the roof and he just goes for it, make it or break it. But Wes, it's great to see so many ex-pros and current pros getting involved with the E-Crit. You yourself, what's your background going into all of this? Yeah, so I've I got a little bit uh, into the Kiss series races. Uh, it is certainly uh, certainly very hard at hard racing, and that's what these riders come out here and really enjoy. You know, you, you can get there on your home trainer. It's a really good community. Everyone sort of gets involved. Doesn't matter what your background is, even if you are a former pro, uh, you know, you can jump in there and race. Uh, but we do have some, you know, we've got fire people from the fire brigade, police officers, we've got ambulance, we've got buddy the garbage man, we've got everyone in here racing. So it's really cool to bring this community together and everyone is a very, very strong Zwifter in this group. We've got everyone in here racing, we've got everyone in here watching as we've got social media incorporation into tonight's broadcast. As we can see, Swift Fitness was there, Lloyd Collins, Mikhail Kaminsky saying front error wheel, that's marginal gains at its best side, good luck. So if you want to get involved, <laughs> comment right down below here in the stream, and we will show your comments on the screen. If you want to encourage Sai, si, you want to give him some tips, maybe, you know, just help him on, feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you want to like this broadcast, to make sure you never miss a broadcast right here again on GoSwift, feel free to do so as well. We broadcast basically every major race on Swift. That's Tuesdays, that's Thursdays, that's Fridays. Click that like button and you'll never miss a broadcast. Wes, two minutes to go. What can we expect when that flag drops? We will expect some Watt bazookas out of the gate. It always is very aggressive. Everyone's sort of riding up that really high watts. And so when, as soon as that, 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 uh, that countdown goes down to that one second, people are already sitting at like maybe that four to four and a half to five watts or maybe even more because they're sprinting. Like, you know, when I've, when I've raced on here before the KISS races, you pretty much are sprinting out of the gates. Because uh, it is, like you said, a bit of a cyclocross start. Everyone just wants to go hammer and tongs. And that sort of shakes out the race. And we've seen that a little bit in the Western E-Crit series as well, that really aggressive at the start and uh, sort, of, sort of shakes down that pack and gets to the pointy end of the race very early on sometimes. Does. So today we're doing the Volcano Circuit, which is seven laps of 4.4 kilometers. Where's, where have you got to be attentive? Where have you got to be awake on this course? That we've seen them race time on this and time course, again in the E-Crit. Yeah, and we've seen them obviously always up through the finish line, up that drag through the volcano there. And then when you come over the other side of that, you've got the downhill there. And that's where we've actually seen some people go on with some moves after that. After we come down the other side, come down the hill, and there's a bit of a drag after that. So that's where a few people have attacked before, after the actual climb through the finish. And we will see some riders probably try and take advantage of that, of that softening up of the legs. They usually try and go up over that volcano through the finish line there and then come down the other side a little bit of a breather that's where some people just start to back off a little bit and rest and that's where the main guys will start to hit it Wes I've got some good news this race is going to be spectacular yeah. have you seen who just joined the star pen might be an Olympic role. Cavendish no well you could oh. join the Aussie hump day right but we got Drew Jin in here who uh no stranger Jin. to keeping five five point five watts per kilo for 40 minutes so uh best of luck keeping just that just logged in 45 seconds ago, he's cutting it fine, but he's made this race. Drew Jin loves to hurt himself, and he loves, he loves just getting out there and amongst it. He just will hold those watts just continuously and is very, very strong. So that'll be great with him here in the mix. Pat Shaw saying good luck to everyone with 25 seconds to go. Ask that banner will go down. So are you feeling confident? Well, <laughs> Wes heard that. I hope you guys heard that as well. We'll see in 10 seconds time as he's going to get underway. Veronica Mitch is in there as well. Vaughn Miller, Shane Miller's wife, GP Lama. He is spinning that up now as we're seeing 243 watts, 300 watts. It is time to get underway. Here we go, Wes. The time has begun now. 43, 40 minutes, 45 minutes, 33 kilometers. It's off. Who are we seeing at the front, Wes? We're seeing Cy right up there in amongst it as well. And now we see who's got going off the front there. We see Polly. We've got some different names in here. We've got Dunn up there as well. We have... Uh, I see Demo Hassan. I see Michael John. Diaz. Anthony Vegan Porsche is up near the front. Wes, I can see on the screen he's sitting mid-pack, just going underneath the start-finish banner, sitting well up near the top in good company. As we're 500 meters into the race, Drew Jin, Cy Richardson. We got those verified batches in here, Wes. 
We do, and we see Gentleman Jim's in there. He's back for some more. Gentleman Jim gave me a few call-outs, and he's certainly stepped it up this last three E-crits. He's been up near the front and showing his form. Ock will be right up here at the front now, leading the pack. Sai comes up past him, overtakes, gives him a little bit of a flick of the elbow, lets the others come through here. So we've got Jones back in the mix again. So Jones usually rocking that Bumblebee outfit. I can't quite see if he's got the Bumblebee outfit, but I do see the name there. So Jones is up there, Alif, Okobi. We have a few guys here from the Wolfpack crew. So the, the, we do. they are down one guy here. They're down in Nadzi, the sort of rogue captain, I would guess you call Nadzi, and the most aggressive out of the bunch who loves to keep attacking. Nadzi is actually uh, at the fire brigade uh, this evening, so he can't make it, but he's encouraging these boys on. He said he would definitely tune in. This is without a doubt the strongest pack I've seen quite a while in the Ecrit series. If you're looking at Sai, you can see he's sitting at 174 beats per minute, 350 watts, almost at 5 watts per kilo as he's trying to keep that front wheel staying at the positioning at the front right now. He's in that softer mode. He said 190 beats is when he's starting to suffer real good, so he's still got a few beats to work with us. By the way, Wes, the reason you don't see Jones in that Bumblebee outfit is because he actually took the KOM out on course. He's been warming up on that four KOM, getting ready for those two-minute efforts that you've got to throw out in crits like this. How is Sai doing so far, sitting so far near the front? He's doing pretty well. I think he's, you know, he looks pretty comfortable on the bike there. He's pretty steady. He's not rocking too much. Uh, yeah, he looks to be pretty, he's, obviously it's not comfortable, but he's making it out to be, so that pace is certainly on. And we see, who's that going off the front now? We see the Bumblebee the outfit. The front, it's Anthony Vegan Porsche, it's Neil Patlaw, it's several riders putting down the pace, but nobody's really made a move all the way near the front yet as they're entering the volcano now for the first time of seven out on course. Definitely power being thrown out now is a massive pack. You've got riders that can sprint like Linton Savatsky, like Aaron Dunn. You've got riders like Ju Jin, Sai. You've got Pat Shaw who can go off the front. Right now, they're keeping their powder dry as they're waiting for that first bit of incline to try and make an attack off the front. But again, if you've got the Swift Mobile link up app, make sure to open it and give a ride on to whoever you're supporting tonight. Whether you're supporting Sai, if you're supporting a family member, a friend, a teammate, Give them a ride on out on course as we see them dropping. Thank you very much for being involved in tonight's race broadcast. Or if you're enjoying it, let us know in the comment section below as well. Wes, who are you giving a ride on to tonight? I'm giving a ride on to Gentleman Jim. I'm going to give him another shout out. Gentleman Jim's going to get a big ride on. He is up there and amongst it. It's great to see that these riders are coming back each week. Uh, we didn't see Gentleman Jim in the start of the series, so it's great to see him in a back amongst it tonight. So he will be on the aggressive. I'm sure he'll try and put an attack in there to show his face. We do see some uh, new names in there. We've got C. There's Lang. Plenty of new Haven't names. Haven't seen Lang in there? Yeah, Soden, B. Soden. Yes, we've got plenty of new names in there. So we, you know, we do still have all of those, all those uh, regulars in there. We, have, we obviously have Dunn in there. We have uh, Pat Shaw in there. Gentleman Jim obviously back for some more. And Ben Van Dam is in there as well. So Ben Van Dam, also part of the Wolfpack Taz crew, a latecomer to joining that crew. Uh, Tom Aliff also joining that Wolfpack crew. So Tom is quite a good time trialer. So he would be one to watch out. Uh, probably a good guy to get away with if anyone wants to do a bit of a move. Look out for Tom Aliff. You mentioned the Wolfpack crew. We've got several teams in here. I see Aussie Hunt Day right being represented by at least four to five riders out there with Neil Padlaw. You got Damo Hassan. They're all strong riders and they're working together. Wolfpack crew down one rider, yet still very strong, having the two pre race favorites in Luke Ockerby and Aaron Dunn, two very strong sprinters who are not afraid to go from the distance. Perhaps they've been watching a bit of Bling Matthews, seeing how he goes in the breakaway, sees how he sprints. Regardless, he'll always go well. Also, think we see a few vision riders in here but we've only got one GCN rider as Sai is sitting at 350 watts right now here in the front just showing what it takes to be amongst the best Australian riders here on Swift. Where do you go from here Wes? He's got 29 kilometers to go. He started really really well. What's the next few steps for Sai as he's racing tonight's E-Crit? Well, he knows that this hill's coming up, so he's coming up. He's actually going to do a turn here on the front just to show the other guys that he's not suffering. He's in there, and he looks quite comfortable on the bike. So he's sitting at that 173. Nice cadence as well, around that 95, uh, 95 to 90. He's going back up to 100 here now, so he's really spinning the legs out. 
and he's keeping himself positioned, ready for any moves. So and I want to see Sai follow some move. It is Oliver Jones, no other but the Bumblebee from New Zealand. Kiwi's going off the front, popping that featherweight power to try and make a gap. Nobody quite reacting to it. This is quite the early Hail Mary to try and go all the way to the finish mm. line alone. What do you think of this move, Wes? Yeah, I think this is definitely a move to try and get a bit of a reaction through the bunch, up through here, through to the finish line. It is a quite a hard and solid drag. He'll be looking to, to have someone like Pat Shaw or someone strong to go away with him. So we will see probably a little bit of fireworks here from, the, from uh, some other haymaker attacks. But whether that drags everyone up or whether the, they have that power up, because you pretty much need that power up to get that gap. So that's whether someone wants to... And as well, some of these riders may have the ideal power up straight up and they will be safe. Saving that, so they will only use that, as you said before, Jasper. They only use that power up to make sure that they don't get dropped from the bunch. If there's some sort of situation like that, otherwise they will guard that we with their Pat life. Pat Shaw now trying to bridge. It's a 10-second gap out of yeah. nowhere for Oliver Jones, and if Pat Shaw manages to bridge, these are two of the strongest solo artists that can go off the front. Imagine Matthew Heyman and having two of those guys in the breakaway. That's what we're seeing now. Uh, Sai is still sitting in near the front, saving that 30% by sitting in the draft. But Pat and Jones, they're throwing everything and seeing what sticks right now as they're going off the front. Six, eight seconds now as it's coming down. Down in the pack, we're seeing it's Falkers, it's Fischio, it is Drew Jin trying to pace this back now. It's still very early, though, in the race. It is still very is early, but they are two very strong riders, so they wouldn't want to let them go away and get too much of a gap on this circuit because those two riders will work together and commit uh, 100%. They will give it everything out there. If they've got that gap, once they have that gap, they are going to try and maintain that. So the bunch is going to have to have a little bit of a think about this, a bit of a shakedown, whether who's going to actually start chasing this or who's going to try and attack across this move now. We got more nice messages coming in for Sai. Boris Kaminsky saying, nice, go Simon, with the little smiley face at the end there. I'm actually going to head over to Sai and see what he feels about this breakaway. So give me a second, Wes, as I'm heading over there. Sai, so we've got a breakaway of two out in front, Pat Shaw and Oliver Jones. Are you scared for this move? Well, I know the names. I know they're strong guys. Uh, I haven't got the legs today to start chasing everything down. So I'm just going to wait. I'm sure there's a lot more motivated people in this bunch right now. Your position so far has been really good. Is this something you've been working on? Uh, it's a, I think that's a lifetime of racing bikes. And the, the nice thing about this, I don't actually have to fight with anyone. I just kind of pedal harder, get to the front, ease back. It's brilliant. It's easy on the elbows. Exactly. So you're in the front group now. You've ridden this for one lap. Where do you feel is the moment where you really got to be awake, really be ready for it? Uh, so it's obviously the first little drag. That's a big one. But then it kicks up again, doesn't it, just for the line. I think that's where we saw, saw Pat go. And I think that's probably the place. Okay. I see which power-up you've got ready. We'll see if he's going to pop that anytime soon. Try and bridge across to the breakaway. Sai, if he can still talk at this moment, he might not have the legs, but he's got the lungs. Wes, over to you. there yeah he's not rocking around too much he hasn't got the tongue out too far so Sai is looking pretty comfortable there and I reckon he will probably follow some of these moves he won't actually chase them but he probably want to follow some of these moves that go like we do see Drew Jin now at the front holding that pace so he's he's certainly one that will could be someone that would chase this breakdown because Drew Jin doesn't mind a bit of pain so he will he'll be the one to try and take this chase up but whether he wants to drag that bunch up with him or try and hit across Look at this, Wes. Pat Shaw got another arrow power up. And the lap before this, he had an arrow power up to try and bridge across. He went underneath the start finish banner and got another one. Maybe it's time to go out and buy a lottery ticket as Pat Shaw is just <laughs> drilling that gap right now. 12 seconds. And the two riders in front of size now putting out five watts per kilo at the back. Joined by Drew Jin, three time Olympic rower out of Great Britain, trying to help bridge that gap back. The two strong engines. They're not panicking yet, though. 10 seconds, west. That's still manageable, isn't it? It's still... You don't want to get it too far over that 10-second mark, though, because once that's sort of... That's very hard to get back on these sort of circuits. And we do see that we have uh, Ockerby up the front there now. And so there are a little bit, a little bit of caution. Uh, Anthony Vegan Porsche is also up the front there now. So these guys are actually taking a few turns now. They're working together. All of these key 
players are working together here and rolling it through. We see Tom Ailiff up the front there now. Jay Ryan, kid. We see Fuller's down the back there, B. Wellington. And also we see Ben Van Dam, who will probably be up the, towards that front end now. He will probably start to think about maybe making a move here. We see a power up going there. Feather over the top there. Everyone trying to react to this. This is the one point on the course where you can make up lost time. Three seconds, two seconds to the top there. You see that Pat Shaw and Oliver Jones, they took that little bit of incline easy, but everyone back in the pack just laid down, even popping some of their power-ups, and now that gap has been neutralized. But that has hurt. It's got to burn matches doing that every lap out of the seven laps. Yeah, that has got to take a little bit of the sting out of the legs. So we probably will see a little bit of a, of a sort of a lolly scramble, like I've said, Jasper, before that last pit of the finish. With this race being so aggressive and the power-ups being used very early on, you should have saved. Being popped by side. This. this is a move. Yep, this is a move here, and he's decided to go on with this now. He sees the danger here. He knows that this gap is starting to increase a little bit. He doesn't want to get out of the action here, so he's getting right open amongst it with that aero boost. Drew Jin and Cy Richardson, the two riders with the verified badges out on course, trying to make a little union towards the front, you know, gentlemen's agreement to try and work together. But down in the pack, you got Ben Van Dam, you got Innovation Cycling, Luke Ockerby, Vegan Porsche, taking turns, bringing it back. I mean, Cy said he was going to try to take it easy, but as soon as the racing gets on, he's going to lose it. That's what he's doing right now. And respect to that, you got yes. Ian Anderson giving it right on. You got Hakim giving right ons. It's looking good, Wes. It's looking good, and we see that replay now here of Cy going up through that finish line, and you can see Drew Jins just in front of him there, and we should cross back to live, and they are together now. So he's getting plenty of rides on here, plenty of support for Cy getting amongst this E-Crit action. So that is very, very good. Thanks, for everyone, for, for tuning in, and make sure you do keep giving those ride-ons and encouragements to your riders that you are watching. Oh, look at Sai. Sai said 190 is where it starts to hurt. Look at where he's at right now. He's at 187. A few more beats to work with. He's definitely getting in a workout. We see Global Cycling Network commenting over on the Facebook feed asking, who do you think is going to win? And the way you vote is by taking out your phone and giving a ride-on to whoever you think is going to win. We'll see that ride-on pop on screen like we're doing right now with Drew Jin. And then that way you actually vote in the game. Simple as that, Swift Mobile you Wake Up app. Get it for your iPhone and your Android device. You do get to vote with that thumbs up. But also remember to give everyone a bit of encouragement here that's further down the back too. Someone who might need that little bit of extra encouragement to stay in this pack. We do see that Sai is really laying a bit of power down here and gapping actually Drew Jin when he's coming through for those turns. We're going to come back up through the volcano here now. I might have to issue an apology. I think I said Drew Jim was British. He's definitely Australian, as I'm seeing that flag out there. But have you noticed one thing? Sai has chosen one bottle cage tonight. He's going arrow. He came here with intent. He's ready to race. And a six, five-second gap. He's still digging in now as they are one-third of the way through the race. 11 kilometers out of 33 kilometers. And Drew Jin and Sai Richardson, with all the riders coming, reining in, are still trying to do the best at the front. But gentlemen, Jim... He's the one doing the pacing back in the pack. Is this, do you think this was a pre-race plan for some of these teams to let the stronger riders go and then slowly reel them in? Like watching a tour stage with Sunweb, with Quickstep bringing back riders? Yeah, I don't think that was actually the strategy of, of what this group was sort of thinking. I think that they didn't expect it, that aggressiveness and that attack, that those two attacks that went with that power. They didn't expect that that was going to happen there. So it caught a few people off guard, and they are strong riders out in front now. So they're really going to have to start to work together here. Otherwise, if they keep doing these attacks and this stop starting, it's really working the advantage of the two breakaway riders here. And back of the pack, you got Luke Ockerby now taking a turn at the front. You are the DS, you are the coach of the Wolfpack Tasmania team, which Ockerby and Don are both a part of. What was their, without sharing too much information, of course, what was their pre-race strategy going into tonight's race? The pre-race strategy was to follow those crucial moves and make sure that those key players like Pat Shaw and that didn't get any, uh, didn't get a sniff of any sort of a breakaway. So we, they are down on numbers by one with Nadzi not there. Nadzi usually would be his role to be that sort of policeman and make sure he goes with those moves early on. So and with Dunn and also uh, Ockleby being two quite fast finishes, they're sort of sitting back a little bit here. So it goes on the on the back of those other guys that have just joined the Wolfpack crew, uh, Ben Van Dam and Tom Alif to try and follow these moves, these crucial moves. Uh, and uh, we do see the bunch sort of 
you sort of almost bunch back up here a little bit. So it is crisis I don't know, uh, time right now, Wes. Sai has been caught. Drew is still out there, but Sai is sitting on just near the back. If you're watching right now, he needs all the encouragement you can possibly throw his way now as he's trying to recover from that attack. He's making his way back up, and he's getting ready for this little incline. This is going to hurt because you build up all that lactic acid going into the attack, and now on that Wahoo kicker, you're going to feel the gradient kick up, and you're going to have to just burn matches trying to follow the pack now, which is what's happening. We're seeing orange numbers all around, 9, 10 watts per kilo as nobody wants to get dropped going into the volcano west but drew jin still five seconds up the road yeah drew jin is not going to give up like i said he's very strong and loves a good amount of hurt he just feeds it some chain constantly drew jin is one of those riders that just loves to grind it out so he's he's going to keep out there and you know he still has that five second buffer here so people could still sort of attack and jump across to that gap now with a power up so it's whether anyone wants to take that chance and roll the dice. If they don't fancy himself for the end in a sprint finish, then maybe they want to go out in the attack. And we see that near, and now with uh, Elis going off the front here. Michael Elias, we've seen his setup. A few weeks ago, we asked to see the Equid Racer setups, and his setup is one of the better ones we've seen. He's really stylish, really simplistic. But tonight, Michael Elias is throwing that all out the window now as he's trying to do the very complicated thing of attacking off the front and trying to keep back the pack but it looks like he's gonna keep back off the pace and by the way Wes have you noticed I've seen your magnificent beard I've seen you go in a full grizzly style I was trying to do you one <laughs> after I was trying to do it right here you see this what do you think of my own little homegrown mustache yeah yeah that's a that's a nice one there looks like you've uh, you've had a bit of a go with a razor there or something well, it could have been a rogue disc break, but who knows? Anyway, back in the race, we've got a collective pack of about 30 to 40 riders still all together with Drew Jin up near the front. Pacing's going on. If you are a rider that's not affiliated with a team, how do you play it? Because like, we've got Anthony Vegan Porsche, we've got Sai, we've got a few other riders just racing for their own, like Dr. Taka, who's in here. How do you play it? How do you play it? You play off those teams. So if there's a bit of politics, a bit of tactics going into it, you can make sure that you take advantage of that happening. You know, being one out in a race like this can work to your advantage. You know, you're not pressured to work as well when you're going away in those moves. You can sort of, you know, if you're not, a, not one of those key players that up there on points, they won't expect too much of you. So you can get a little bit under the radar with it there and just do the minimum amount of work and then try and come away with a win yourself. I've actually just seen that Aaron Dunn has been spat out the back. So Aaron Dunn... Actually, he's got the yellow leader's jersey like you'd see in the Tour de France. Aaron Dunn is the current rider with the most amount of points accumulated in the E-Crit series. But he is about a lap back. What's happening, Wes? I'm not sure. We did have some other interference uh, a couple of weeks back with Dunn having some problems with his kicker. So not sure if it's a mechanical or whether he's actually just had a bit of a blow up there. So it'll be interesting to see whether whether that is the case i will probably get some confirmation of that because uh we, we do have a bit of a a message back and forth between the wolfpack guys here so i'll get a live feed of what's going on i'll be able to fill you in shortly jasper good so if you're just tuning in you're wondering what are you watching you tuned in late well we got Sai Richardson of gcn racing the australian e-crit right here on the ghost with facebook page we're about halfway through the race he's sitting top to mid pack together with Ju Jin, Pat Shaw, past racers, Olympic rower and we got some of the strongest Australian riders out there in course from Tasmania, from Melbourne, from Perth, from Sydney, wherever they are they're tonight on their kicker, on their Neo, on their Drevo and they're racing tonight right here in the E-Crit series as we see Pat Shaw once again keen up to 10 watts per kilo popping that featherweight to try and get off the front and get separation from that collective pack he's one of the guys that likes the bit of anarchy in the race he likes to go off the front and see who else has the, you know, the nerve to try and go with him and break off. Because he has got that athlete body. He can just attack, then recover, then attack, then recover, and then go for an incredible sprint near the end. And we'll see Pat Shaw as we're getting the instant replay, which is a great new feature we're adding to the broadcast. Pat Shaw going off five seconds. What's happening, Wes? Pat Shaw, that is a very strong move. And he used that featherweight power up to get away there. So... He will try and sort of maintain this gap here now. We will see some guys probably thinking about going across this now. We see a lot of guys going up towards the front here, sort of sussing it out, whether they want to take that on now. Gentleman Jin right up there, 
So we will see some other fireworks here. It's just a question of whether anyone wants to use that power up now, because like I said, we're getting towards that halfway point of the race. So people will start to think about using that power up to the absolute perfection. And that would usually be used in that last kilometer if they're gonna do a flyer or in that sprint finish at the end. I love that you can see that the addition of size just made the racing so much harder because usually at this point in the race, everyone will be assessing the situation going, okay, we're halfway through the race. I've attacked. I didn't really get anywhere. Let's get ready for a sprint. Tonight, they're throwing all out of the window. They want to win the most spectacular fashion as we got riders, we got commentators, we got, well, spectators all watching tonight as this is going to be a great finish to the race. 17 kilometers in, we got 16 left of racing now as they're once again heading up towards the volcano. So I think we got about four laps to go. Ben Van Dam now kicking it up. Who's Ben, Wes? Ben Van Dam is a young rider from Hobart, 23 years of age, quite a strong rider, and I am actually coaching Ben, so I know the numbers he can put out, and he's quite strong. Had a little bit of trouble when he joined this uh, series with uh, Dropout, and we've also got confirmation from uh, Aaron, a big shout out to Optus, the provider down his way. Uh, he had Dropout, so that's why we saw Aaron Dunn uh, back off the, off the pace there, so... Uh, ben Van Dam, though, is a quite a strong rider, and uh, he'll be one to watch as well in this you series. See this, West, we got Sire popping a drafting power up, yet he's going off the front, trying to draft the air right in front of him. Now, he's getting another power up going underneath the start finish banner in just a second, <laughs> trying to make up the gap to yeah. the riders near the front now, but the pack has thinned out. Yeah, and Sai obviously using that power up up there because he obviously didn't want that draft one, so he wanted to see what he could get coming under those banners there. So smart move, get rid of that drafting power up. Probably not the most powerful one to use. Uh, so Sai's got rid of that now, and he's just still sitting out there, just being a little bit of a carrot out here to see who's going to carry on with him here. It's working, though. His attack actually thinned out the peloton quite well. It's stretched out. You've got Anthony Vegan Porsche bridging the gap, sitting on his wheel, Damo Hassan, Luke Ockerby, who... I mean, we're halfway through the race. We've seen who's got the legs tonight. If we start looking at the potential favorites for, you know, late attack or sprint, Ockerby has got to be the name. He can do everything. Tasmanian Devil, is yeah, it going to be his night? Yeah, Ockerby's a bit of an all-rounder. He can go with those moves and quite punchy, but also very fast in the finish. And this sort of uphill, sort of uh, hard sprint that it is on this volcano circuit probably suits Ockerby the best, I would say. That's usually what he says too, because I touched ground just before the race with Luke to see how he's feeling. He said, yeah, yes, but you know, the same old, the same old. We'll see how it goes. And usually when he says that, that's when he's got diamonds in his legs. So 15 to 17 <laughs> watts per kilo for 10 seconds. I would not be surprised to see that going into tonight's sprint. As Luke Ockerby is one of the stronger riders going from being a marathon runner, then being injured, and then translating over into the cycling discipline now. As do we have Sai going off the front again? I do spot it out of my eye as Drew Jin and Sai Richardson are trying to get off the front now. Another match being burned. Linton Savatsky, one of the fastest sprinters, probably the, the Caleb Ewan of the E-Crit. He's really specializing in that sprint feature. But now we've got a four-man bridge going on here. This is, this is chaos, Wes. Can you make heads or tails in this? This is... This is chaos here, and a strong group that we do see go away here with that gap now. So we've got Anthony Vegan Porsche up the front of this group, starting to make sure the pace comes back towards it. They're going to get compacto here shortly, I think. I don't think they want to let this move go. It's going to be too strong to let those riders go away. Looks like Sai is about to overheat over there. It's really heating up now as they're inside the volcano. Off the front, we got Drew Jin, we've got Graham Watson, and we also got another rider up there, Michael Elias. But they're being caught now, but relentless attacks, never sitting down. And as we say that, Ben Van Dam, another rider to try and go off the front and just make it so difficult for all the sprinters to set in. It requires you to burn so many matches that when you come to the end, you've just got an empty matchbox. So we'll see now Sai sitting up again. Drew is there. Ockerby. When they jump off the bike tonight, there's going to be some calories burned. Yeah, we do see Zavatsky still in here. He hasn't done too much. He hasn't shown his colors that much. He is a quite a fast finisher as well. So Zavatsky is probably one to watch as well. We don't see him following too many of his moves. He's sort of just staying in the pack, saving the legs. He hasn't got too much responsibility there. So he's flying a little bit under the radar there. And I know you liked, like Zavatsky. He's one of, your, one of your men to watch, isn't he, Jasper? Yes. Si, David is saying, come on, Sai, you can do it. Omar is saying, right on, Sai, come on. 
It looks like Sai is really troubled now. So if you haven't already given him a ride on, get on. He's trying to get on top of his breathing. Try not to overheat as it's very hot inside. Ellie is saying, I nominate Sai Richardson for this week's wattage bazooka. As he's also got the wattage bazooka in the background. Right on now. Another 10Ks to go now. As he's getting the heart rate down, giving us the thumbs up. Sitting near the front and it looks like it's all back together. So despite the relentless attacks, we've still got a group of Compacto back here in the Peloton. What's the next move, Wes? We we do, and most likely, my guess is Jones will probably go on the attack here. Jones is quite strong. Got that KOM jersey on his back, so he's shown that he's in form already tonight. Done a quite a bit of a good warm-up and, and picked up a jersey at the same time in that warm-up. So we will see Jones probably go on the attack here. Always aggressive. Now we're in that last part of the race here now. So these sort of moves, if they actually have some strong numbers in there, someone like Shaw joined him, could actually get legs and stay away here. Now it's all about staying on top of the cadence. You cannot let it drop. You've got to keep those legs turning as the grading kicks up here to 6 7% that you'll see up in the corner. They're really digging deep now going into the volcano with 12Ks to go. Three laps left. They're racing 15 minutes. You've got to give it everything now. If you get dropped, if you get spat out the back, there's really no coming back on as the pace will stay through the roof west. This is now turning into the pointy end of the race. The pack is still stretched out. Oh, Jones making his way to the front. But I see Dr. Taka is still in here. And we met Dr. Taka in Melbourne, mm. quite the character. If you're not already following him on over on Instagram, he's definitely a fun follow as he ventures the world with his RCC kit. Near the front now, Ben Van Dam and Ockerby kicking up now, just trying to stay near the pack. This might just be a record time on the volcano counterclockwise circuit as they've been averaging about five minutes every lap around. You try doing that on your own bike at mm. home on Swift. I bet you you're going to be staggering once you get off the bike. And we'll see how Sai is going to get off afterwards now. As we got Sai taken up near the front now, trying to keep that pace high so nobody else can make a move. Ben Van Dam sitting in here still. Ockerby. It's time for you to pick a horse to go with, Wes. 15K, oh, actually 10Ks to go. Who's your horse for tonight? Whoa. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go the dark horse. So I've already called him out, and I'm gonna go Jones, Jones for the win, the New Zealander. Can't get the points, but I'm gonna call out Jones for the win. Okay, Jones for the win. I'm gonna go with uh, a man in the studio right here. He's working hard, Cy Richardson. He's got control of it. Compared to the other races we've seen, we know the lack of Dan and Matt heckling him. Of course, that's going to be lost Watts out of the window. We're trying to do our best to coach Sai through this now as he's sitting well near the front. And he's almost through it now. Just wonder what's his sprint like as we're going to come to the end. Being a mountain biker, should he have a good sprint coming to the end here? I think Sai is pretty tapped out here. He, I don't know how his finish is going to be. He's put in some nice efforts here. We can see him sitting quite high now. He hasn't got many beats to play with. So Sai is, I would say, on his rivet here. But you, as you can see, everyone jockeying for position near the front. The pack is thin down. You got Sai and the GCN kid. You got Oliver Jones and the Bumblebee near the front. You got Luke Ockerby further down right in the blue and white Gamba kit. Further back, you've got Drew Jin. Several riders now, as you can spot them near the front. Anthony Vegan Porsche, Damo Hassan. Keep an eye out now as we got 10Ks to go now. Another 10 minutes of racing. So I think this is Drew Jin now going on to the attack once again. Relentless. It seems like if you want to be a good cyclist, you've got to be a rower. Or is it the other way around if you're Bradley Wiggins? Who knows? Drew Wiggins, oh, sorry, Drew Jin going off the front now. <laughs> Two second gap. You caught me right there, Wes. Yeah, Drew Wiggins. Drew here we go. And we see Drew going on with this now. He's really committing here. He wants to make sure that he gets a nice gap there. And he's going to need that gap if he wants to stay away. We do see an aero power up coming in behind him. We're going to see this replay of this. No, we're going to see Sai in slow mo here. <laughs> the suffer face. Sai is really concentrating here, so he, he has that mental face going on, that bit of a zone there. You can see that he's really honed in, and he's watching this screen like a hawk now, following these moves up and out of the saddle. He's sitting in the right position, though. He's matching Ockerby, he's matching Van Damme, he's sitting well. But up further, you got Damo Hassan, Anthony Vegan Porsche. Could tonight be the day that Damo Hassan takes that long away to victory? He's been up there, top five, top ten, again and again. But tonight could be the day. He just needs to catch on to that front group with Ju Jin. But Sai is not letting it go. He's trying to catch Damo San, who's one second up the road. And he's bringing back the entire pack behind him. Gentlemen, Jim, Jones, Shaw. It's good work by Simon at the front now. 
Yes, Simon's bringing it all back together here, not letting that little group go off the front. That would have been quite a dangerous move. Who would have taken that chase up? But Sai has taken that on. So we can see the wattage bazooka there, just over Sai's left shoulder. And I think it's ready to fire. I think he's, at, he's definitely in that limit zone here. He's really put that effort in to get that group back. You can hear the heavy breathing now. So Sai is really working hard here now. You've got a last minute towel coming in as well. It's essential. You've got to always have a towel and a fan ready by you. It uh, looks like we uh, missed out on that one now. It's a, a last second emergency towel is coming in for Sai who's now sitting in the middle of the pack. Heart rate still high, trying to get a control over it. Two laps to go, though. Linton Savatsky's up here. Drew Jin being caught now, and it's all back together. And we should expect, we could expect, it all to come back down now. But when they turn left here in a second, they've got that dreaded climb, which they're going to have to hit up again, Wes. Are we going to see Oliver Jones light yep. this one up? Yeah, Oliver Jones, I reckon, is going to light it up like Luna Park. He will be definitely looking to try and go on this move. He knows he can't probably match the guys at the end like Ockerby with that sprint. Uh, so he will be have to, having to look for that move. So hopefully he's listening here and hopefully uh, the other riders aren't paying too much attention because they'll probably be on his wheel now. He's probably a bit of a marked rider. I've made a bit of a call out on that. So Jones would probably be my, most likely to attack. I reckon Pat Shaw won't attack this time. He will be probably a little bit guarded with his effort and probably stay back and sort of look towards Ockerby when Ockerby times his sprint. We'll probably try and match him with it. I think he'll be saving it. Size now popping that drafting boost, hoping to get another power up coming underneath that start finish banner. Two times more, twice, you're going to have an opportunity to get an aero power up. If you're Pat Shaw, you might have gotten one every single time coming underneath the banner. Who knows? We'll see how it goes on now as we are... 8Ks up from the finish line now, all together, and we'll see if, because right now is where you'd expect the pace to come down again, but knowing it's the E-crit, somebody's about to light it up. Whether it's going to be Ockerby going for a surprise attack, Van Damme, you mentioned Shaw should take it easy. He still has a sprint. He's not like Troy Herefoss that has to light it up from mm -hmm. distance. Pat Shaw, Avanti Iso, he can sit in, and he's probably got that power up. What's, what's the power up meaning in all of this? Which power up do you want coming the into the sprint? Up. The power-up, so you, you, get, you can get a, a number of these power-ups. You get a drafting one, a featherweight for the climbing, but your main one would be the aero power-up. So that gives you that aero boost, and that's probably the most powerful one to use, definitely for the sprint finishes. So all the riders, if they were going out the last couple of laps, coming under those banners, if they had, the, had uh, some sort of power-up they didn't want, like a drafting one, using it up like we saw Sai use it up, and then to try and change it up and get one of those other aero boosts, and most likely that aero boost is the one that everyone wants, and they will hold on to it. Some riders in this race will hold on to that aero boost the whole race, holding that just for the finish so and is that yeah, the right it's move? definitely uh, is that the right thing to do it, it is if you if you're a fast finisher and you're you're not using too much of your legs to stay in that bunch so some of these riders will use those power ups in those crucial moments when it gets really heavy and hard we saw side those earlier in that when he was doing those moves and attacks but we did see some people popping those just in the bunch as well getting rid of those power ups because they probably wanted that power Power, the aero power up so it is a bit of a tactic here and people have to work that out and that's where the experience comes into account here of knowing what your what your sort of uh most suited sort of uh to the race so whether you're a fast finisher or whether you're an attacker you need to use those power ups to your advantage see with a lap and a half to go west i'm gonna head over to Sai because we might not have matt and dan here to heckle him but i can coach him a tiny bit because i know the riders to watch out for so give me a second as i head over there for the final lap and a half Okay. Get over here to Sai now as he's crossing into the volcano once again, trying to maneuver around everything around here. Sai, the riders look out for, for the sprint. You've seen Pat Shaw, you've seen Okrabi Savatsky. Those are the wheels to try, you know, and slid into like Sagan would in the sprint. You feeling ready for this? Uh, well, there's one more lap, isn't there? There's one more up. One more climb before the last time up. I want to think this is probably. Can be a bit of action there? Uh, think a bit of action. Uh, I'm just hanging in, man. Oh, man, I'll tell you, you've got the worst power of luck as well. I've been keeping an eye on that. So I hope that the move that might happen goes well for you, though. But really strong riders tonight, and you've really been working hard. I hope it works out for you going into the sprint. Thanks. I've, my plan was to do a contador, you know? I know I can't win, so I'm going to try and do some stuff before the finish line. Great, everyone loves a bit of birdie. We got Sai in here tonight. What do you think about the ride-ons that have been coming in tonight? 
That's great. My pockets look well full. Maybe that's having you down. That's, that's the reason you're not in the front. No way, man. Right arms, they're weightless. <laughs> oh, marginal gains there with the right arms. Best of luck to Sai now. We'll leave him to it now. She has to concentrate. It looked like doing that talk, his heart rate actually came down a few beats, so maybe that will help going into the sprint now as he's sitting near the front. Wes, over to you. Oh, we, we do see Sai breathing quite heavily there now. It is quite hard. He's still up the front there. We do see Ockelby in amongst it there. So he's really right up the front in that second or third spot. So it is going to be those key players looking around here, making sure there isn't any sneaky moves here. No one really wanting to go on with anything. And if any riders aren't confident for that sprint finish, then now's your time to shine. Five Ks to go, Wes. That's all there is. And about 500 meters time, they're turning left. So you still got two times up that incline, two times up the incline. So this is the penultimate time of that incline. We'll see as more right ons coming in, mentioning that his pocket is well full out on course. We'll see, maybe it could be a record breaking right ons tonight. We'll see if everyone, all the Australians keep riding in right ons. You're seeing your comments being popped up. I see Wes with a big grin. Is that because you got Aaron Dunn near the front? Now, he may have been lapped, but he's still out on course, laying down the hood on all the other riders trying to keep it back together. Featherweight's being popped. You got Wes, sorry, you got Sai all the way down in the drops now, trying to keep it up near the front. No one can really make the separation now. So you got one more little incline, and then Wes, the infamous cowbell. I hope you've got something ready. Oh, oh yeah, I got something ready. So a we, bit of background story close. for about four to five weeks, we've been trying to arrange a cowbell, <laughs> but because I was in charge of it, of course, it never really amounted to anything. So we've had Wes come up with some very, very, very well done cowbells. <laughs> <laughs> so we will get a cowbell coming under this banner. It's not quite uh, the uh, loud cowbells that you'd hear in the mountains, but it will do the job. We see Jones. Here's a Jones now. I called him out to take this fly, and he's decided now is the time to go. Come on, Sai. All the way go. now. All the... the way to the finish line. One lap to go as Wes rings the cowbell. Oliver Jones off the front. Ben Van Dam. Sai is there. Porsche is in there. You got Uckerby. You got everyone trying. There. One lap to go. Four Ks. I think we're going to see a soft five-minute time on this one, especially with Oliver Jones, the Kiwi, the Bumblebee near the front, rocking that KOM kit. This is going to be a great finish, Wes. Not a single second of rest has been in here, and it's not E-crit race. It's been hot, it's been fast, and now it's going to come down to one last explosion out on course. This is going to be a tough one. Can O Jones, can Oliver keep this all the way? Jones is certainly one that won't die wondering to hold that power all the way. We saw that replay of that attack up through the finish line, through the volcano, and he really looked like he's going to commit now all the way. So it's going to be quite a tough call to hold off this fast bunch because it will see some other riders wanting to sort of bridge that gap and make sure that he doesn't get too far out in front there. We can see he's just hovering well, out in front there. that gap near the front, leading the pack now, Sai's getting out of the saddle. And I'm getting a little bit thirsty out here on course, so the riders certainly must be this last lap. They would be so hot in, the, in, the, in their lounge room, in their garage, wherever their setup is, they would be quite on the limit. We see Cy now in the, little, in the, in the uh, viewing there. We can see him off to the left-hand side of the screen. He's really putting in now. He's getting a bit of rock through the shoulders, so Cy is certainly not leaving. I think in the, uh, not leaving anything left in the legs. He's going to explode those legs and use it right up to the end. We will see some fireworks going in this last few Ks. Most likely we'll see another fly go. We'll see Cody Jones saying, go full now. gas, side. Come on, let's go. One last kick up the final KOM. You can do this. Anthony Vegan Porsche also sitting well tonight. Those extra carrots out in front he's been chasing has done him really well. As he's sitting, sitting second overall, and he's going to take at least 20 points on Aaron Dunn and clawing himself back into the contention for first place. We've got a lot of people in here in the studio tonight. How about we cheer for Sai now? As in, come on, Sai, you can do this. We've got about six people in here. Sai, <laughs> one last stick here. Two Ks to go. How many matches do you think he's got left, Wes? I think he's got one match left. One match left for Sai. He's got a grimace on his face here now. So Sai is certainly... Up there on his limit, he's only got a couple of beats to with four or five beats to play with. Till he's oh, here comes maxed. Drew. Here comes Drew. One last attack off the front. 12 watts per kilo. How long can he sustain this? It's 2Ks. It's 
about three minutes to two and a half minutes, if there's a guy who can do this, it's Drew. He's attacking off the front. Those massive legs of his are now being used to turn over that engine on his bike. Look at him going off the front now, keeping back Ockerby, keeping back Savatsky. He's not dipped below 600 watts, and look at his heart rate. It's still at 175. Oh. Wes, six, that is 10 a, that seconds. That is a nice... Nice, nice move, and Drew is going to keep going on with this. Look at the bunches in the distance there if we're looking back in that view behind here. So Drew's going to keep going on with this. Someone's going to have to react soon here because this gap is quite significant here. So we do see the bunch sort of spearheaded now by Sai going back towards the front here. Looks like Sai's going to drag it back up here now. Yes, but if there's a guy that can do it, it's Drew. But the thing going against him is that when the pack hits that little incline towards the finish line, they're going to be hitting it with 55 to 60 k's an hour, and they're going to claw back three to four seconds on Drew there alone. And it looks like Drew is just fighting. He's fighting it, but back in the pack, you've got Sai, who is chasing him back, sitting fifth wheel. You've got Savatsky. You've got everyone working together. They're fairly content on having a sprint finish today, as we've got 1k to go now. They're going to see that final bit of incline. We're going to zone in on Sai, mention that something might happen coming into this incline now, we're just within the final 1.2 Ks now. So they're going to turn left, go up for about 200 meters at 5%. It's going to give that little bit of incline where you can get extra watts, extra motivation. It's the last minute of racing. You can't leave anything out on the road. And another drafting boost. Sai has not been lucky tonight, but he's kicking it now. He's looking down. The watts are going through the roof. Nine watts for him. Oliver Jones, nine watts per kilo. Ockerby is up there. You got Pat. You got everyone trying to bridge across to Drew Jin, who looks to have been caught now as we got a featherweight being popped arrow being popped gears are being changed maybe he's out in the 11 now ben van der arrow power-ups all around savatsky's near the front it's savatsky but ockerby it's matthews versus ewan now savatsky ockerby they're gonna battle 400 more meters now as they're turning right they're gonna hit another kick but it's Jay Burns, a newcomer, still in the front, but Savatsky is sitting in that slipstream. He's going to come around any second now. It's between Savatsky, Ockerby, and Pat Shaw. Does Pat Shaw have it? Does Ockerby have it? It's going to come down to the wire now, all the way, but it's going to be Linton Savatsky in front of Pat Shaw. And then we've got Luke Ockerby in third place. Well done, everybody. And then we got Sai a bit further down. Massive round of applause, everybody, for Sai. That was a good race. Wes, you I will just head over to the side, see first wow. reactions after that race. So hang on for a second. Whew, sorry. If I could give a ride on right now, I'd give one to you. How did that go? Well, that was great fun. I think I was quite pleased with the result, really. Right. Would have been nice to have snuck a podium. But... I think a top 10 was pretty good. Yeah, I'll take that. Going into that final climb, what went through your head when you saw aero power up? Saw 10 watts per kilo all around. Ah, uh, well, you just got to focus on your own, on your own race. It's a bit of a cliche, but it's true. So I actually shut my eyes. One of the luxuries of being on Zwift for that last little dig. And then when I got to the top, I just carried on emptying the tank as best I could. Good. Are you going to be back next week? <laughs> I think actually I'm away next week. I'm going... Going to Berlin, actually, which would be nice. And I don't think there's any racing involved. What's happening in Berlin? I tell you, I've got to race Matt Stevens. He's on a fixie, and I'm on a city bike, so it should be good. Where can you see this action? It's going to be on GCN, oh, a couple of weeks, I reckon. But loads on Facebook and Instagram as it happens. Should be good fun. If, yeah. if anything is to judge by, Stephen Cummings won both British National Championships by being on Swift. Matthew Heyman won Perry Robert. I think you're going to win your race as well. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, well, I mean, undeniably, it's great training as well as being good fun. But you work so hard. It's kind of, I think, if you download the power files, I suspect they're quite different. A few less peaks, but a lot fewer troughs, you know. So, overall, it's just brutal. Any last words for all the people giving you ride-ons, cheering you on during the race? Yeah, well, thank you very much, everyone. That was a great race. There's some seriously strong riders out there. I doff my imaginary cap to all of you, and uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. Awesome. I'm going to head back to Wes for a second, and then he can... Hang it up already, but I think tonight has been really great. So I really raced his heart out, along with all the other Australians. Wes, any last words? And we see that the towel's been handed to him right at the end there. So we did get him a towel eventually. So great job, Sai. Really putting the hurt on and really showing 
that, and giving a bit of respect to the riders and the tip of the imaginary hat there. He's saying that virtual hat tip to the riders in this race because we do see some very, very strong power throughout this series. And that has just been proven tonight with Sai just saying how hard that race was. And he certainly had nothing left at the end there. He emptied the whole tank. And we did see the rest of the riders in this race do exactly the same there. And I did say they wouldn't be taking it easy on Sai joining in. And they didn't. Well, last words. Thank you to everyone watching tonight, all the racers. Thank you to US for showing up as well. And also the man behind the scenes. I just want to show this. That's okay. This man made everything possible tonight. Johnny Noblet, all the additional graphics you saw today on the screen would not have been possible without him. So thank you very much, Johnny. GCN for hosting us tonight, Cypher Racing. If you want to see more of this content, click that like button. We'll be back next week the same time. We'll see. Cypher will be in Berlin, but Pat Shaw, Lugak will be the rest. They'll still be racing. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been all for us, and we'll see you next week.